So I gotta go out here and shut up. Because <laughs> I'll be on the tape if I don't go out here and shut up. Mm. You need to judge him. He's gonna ask you a question. Okay. Here, Austin, keep this with your stuff. That uh, says that uh, on this date you were interviewed, you're on tape 39. Okay. And uh, when your descendants find this 100 years from now, they'll go down to Portsmouth Public Library and they'll look at you. Okay? <laughs> you all right with that? Hey, how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is August to be three years. Great work. I got 30, you're on the 39th tape and I... I think you are 129. I've got 128 guys for you. Okay. Okay, you told me your name, Austin Hoke Leadham, and your date of birth was, uh, what again? That was December the 27th of 1932? Correct. Okay. And where were you born? Idaho, Ohio, in Pike County. Idaho, Ohio. Yeah, that's in Pike County. Okay. Right. Okay. And, uh, and your present address, however, here is uh, in Portsmouth, Ohio. What's what's the address here? Fifteen twenty one Fifth Street. Okay. And uh, exact that's that's where we are right now, isn't it? This Correct. Is, this we're, home. we're here. And what's your occupation? What do you do? Cause trouble? I've been accused <laughs> of that. <laughs> so, uh, are you uh, retired then from a real job? Yes. From what? I did 20 years in law enforcement, and then I worked as insurance investigator, investigator for attorneys. Okay. I sold uh, encyclopedias and Bibles for several years, uh, okay. Okay. and uh, then I did telephone work, okay. putting uh, wires together. Putting cable, running cable, and putting wires together, I think, for the telephone company. Yes, okay. contract labor, okay. splicing mostly, putting, okay. putting the pairs together. Okay. Um, you also have an interesting, uh, I'll call it a sideline, but uh, obsession. <laughs> you you are a uh, editor of a newspaper called... Well, Shawnee Sentinel. I'm not Sentinel. really the editor, I'm just one of the members. Okay. It's, uh, Is there anybody in charge? You're in charge of that, aren't you? You do that. Not really. There's no one in charge. If anybody objects to a story, it doesn't run. There's no one in charge. <laughs> Correct. Okay. It's a, it's a, a group, an agreeable group. Okay. If, uh, and everybody looks over every story. Okay. And if anything's not right, if some, somebody gets some objection, it doesn't go. Well, who, who decides to run the story? I mean, no, who decides to follow through on the story? Um, or do, do you have reporters and that sort of thing that go out, they get their own story, they bring it back, and you all critique it. Is that the way it yes, uh, we have four active people. Okay. Plus dozens and dozens of people who contribute. They, many of them would rather not be known. Okay. <laughs> and it's called the Shawnee Sentinel. Yes. How long has it been ongoing? It began in 1995 at Shawnee State University. Okay. And you got kicked out of there, right? Well, our newspaper got moved off campus. Okay. <laughs> Most of us managed to stay but behaving carefully. Okay, okay. We kept on publishing and then the newspaper sort of grew out of the university into the community area. Okay. And, and you do stories on uh, on uh, features such as uh, people who, who should do the right thing and uh, people who don't and uh, things of that nature, right? You, there's a lot of politics involved. You, you comment a lot politically, is that correct? Yes, we don't really care about politics, and we don't really write about people who are not involved in public office okay. or public work. Okay. If there's taxpayers' money involved, then we feel we should look. Okay. If there's something wrong, people have a right to know. All right. So we simply tell the story as accurately as we can. And uh, recently, you've you've put on a uh, web page. Yes. Right? Okay, and that that's very exciting, and. Are, are you still in print, or are you devoted to your web page now? We'll be printing hard copies. We haven't for some time. Okay. Okay, well, I, I think that's just fascinating. That's why I dwelt on it a little bit, you know. Now, uh, how much education have you had? 
How far did you go to school? I got a bachelor's degree. In what? Uh, history. Really? Well, where did you get that from? Shawnee State University. Shawnee State. That's before they kicked you out, right? <laughs> Actually, I got a four-year degree in only five and a half years. You did? Okay. They really wanted to get rid of you then, pretty quickly. Now, are you uh, married, single, widowed, divorced, separated, or all of the above? Been married 49 years. Okay. Have six children, 28 grandchildren. And you forgot how many great grandchildren? Not many yet so far. We're well, young yet. Okay, that's true. Now, um, your wife's name, what is that's her? Wanda. Wanda? Okay. What is her maiden name? Leffler. How do you spell that? L E F F L E R. Is she also from Pike County? Yes, she's a native of Omega. It's in the east side of the county, north near the airport, okay. Waverly area. Okay, Omega and Idaho. You two represented and got together, and that was six children you had from. What are their names? The oldest is Charles, and we have two daughters, Deborah, Sarah. Second son, Wallace. Third son, Austin. And the fourth son, Chilton. What's the fourth son's name? Chilton. Chilton. Okay. Um, you now, of course, they, they have children, or some of them yes, do. They, they all have all children. All have children. Okay. I like to get a timeline here. Uh, what were your parents' names? My father's name was Gordon Lloyd Leadham. My mother was Jesse Shoemaker. Okay. And Shoemaker was her maiden name? Yes. Okay. Now, your father's parents' names, do you know those? My father's father was George Nathan Leadham, mm -hmm. and his wife, my grandmother, was Alice Lenore Nisley Leadham. Okay. And your mother's parents' names? Grandfather was Addison Shoemaker, and his wife was Mary Frances Mason Shoemaker. Okay. Now, has somebody done a search of your, your family tree? My wife has. Okay. And and where would you... Okay, she's holding it up to me now. <laughs> okay. And uh, we would find this on a big orange poster board at your house, wouldn't we? Correct. My wife's done a tremendous work with this. <laughs> How far back do you go, Wanda? Uh, on his grandmother right here, uh -huh. I've gone back... Uh, 1100. To the year 1100? Uh-huh. Is that England? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, good darn. Pretty close to William the Conqueror there. Yes. Yeah, 1066. Right? In interesting. Yeah. Yes. They were lords. The Williams were lords and knights and all kinds of stuff. They've fallen since then, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes. They may have come over, come over with the Frenchies. Uh, John Leadham was um, a Quaker parents. He was born in Ireland. Oh, I see. Because they were com they were missionaries. His parents were. They were, they were missionaries to Ireland. From England to Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he was born in. Um, he came here about 1744. Okay. Or they did. And he started all that trouble with the British a bit. No. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> most of his, some of my Irish friends say it's easy to hate a Brit. Yeah. So uh, he willingly took part in the uh, war with the British, however, against the French and Indians. Oh, okay. And also his son, and his son got to fight the British. His son got to fight the British in the American Revolution? Yes. Okay. And on. again during the Second World War, the Second War with England. In 1812? Correct. He was here in Ohio then. Okay. Interesting. And, uh, did, did, uh, so your roots in Pike County go way back? Back, right. Okay. The family didn't travel much, really. Uh, great, great, great grandfather, William, Lead him, landed in Manchester in 1790. Is that Manchester, Ohio? Yes, Adams County. Adams County, okay. And then they made their way up to Pike County. Yes. Okay. Um, Wanda, what were your parents' names? Charles Leffler. Charles? Uh-huh. What was your mother's name? Selma Sarah Ray. She was born in Soda County. My dad was born in Pike County. And uh, what was her maiden name? Ray, R-A-Y. R-A-Y, mm -hmm. okay. 
Do you remember your parent, your, your your parents, parents, your grandparents? Yes. What was your father's parents' name? I don't remember him. He couldn't speak English. He was German. Mm -hmm. um, his name was George, I believe. Yeah, George. And my grandmother's name on my dad's side was um, Menix, M I N N I X. Uh huh. And they were from. Uh, around uh, Pike County, but I don't know, around the Beaver area. Okay. They're all buried around Beaver, there in the cemetery. What were your mother's parents' names? Alan Blackburn Chilton Ray. What? <laughs> Alan? Alan Blackburn Chilton Ray. I okay. don't know whether he was related to these Blackburns around here or what, but he was okay. from Lincoln County, uh, West Virginia. Uh-huh. And he never knew his father. His father died when he was four. Okay. And her name was, well, I was doing genealogy, I found out her name was Perkins, but they went by Browns and they all settled out of Lyra. All right, Browns. I know some Browns out there. That's them. Don Brown. And That's them. Okay, interesting. My mother's uh, relatives. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you then uh, this, um, Austin, uh, you were in the military. Yes. How long were you in the military? Three years, eight months, one day. Okay. And uh, what branch were you in? Air Force. Did were you did were you drafted? Did you enlist? What? No, I, I enlisted. I was... When was your enlistment date? I first went in uh, first of January, nineteen fifty. Okay. And I got out the third day of September, second day of September, nineteen fifty-three. What was your rank when you got out? PFC. PF. <laughs> Did you go up and down the ladder? <laughs> no, not really. Some fellows got promoted several times uh, and still were PFCs. I don't understand that. How do you get promoted and you're still a PFC? It's, I know a fellow promoted six times. Mm -hmm. you make PFC, he'd lose it. You get promoted PFC again, lose it. He had six promotions, he was already E2. Then back down the buck private, okay. and then up and down, okay. Yeah, he had fun. Okay. Um, where did you do your basic training? Blackland, Texas. Okay, that's in San Antonio, isn't right. it? Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you went in 1950, and uh, of course the Korean War came along June 25th there, didn't it, in 1950. Uh, did you go to Korea, or did you no. go to Asia, or what happened there? No, no. I, uh, I served one year in the uh, medics. And Air Force medic? Air Force medic. Okay. And uh, then I went into electronic school okay. for 32 weeks, and then into turret system mechanic school. Turret system? Okay, these are the turrets on the planes. That on the B-36. B-36. They were retractable turrets. They, the weapons were actually inside the aircraft. I see. And they would fold out. And uh, they operated by remote control. Mm -hmm. Okay. The nose and the tail weapons weren't retractable, but the other six turrets were at 16, 20 millimeter weapons. Okay. Two in each turret. And and you were uh, um, say that again. You were an electronics maintenance person on those, or, or yes. And then I got an opportunity to go to gunnery school. Gunnery. Okay. And uh, back to Larry Air Force Base for that and uh, finished up enlistment with the 326 Bomb Squadron, 92nd Bomb Wing, at Fairchild, Washington. Okay. Uh, after Lackland, how long was your basic training? Eight weeks, six weeks? Basic training then was standard 13, but I got by the little less honor grad. Yeah, honor grad. And, and after your basic training then, where did you go? After Lackland? I got to stay at Lackland. Oh, you did? Okay. And, and what what happened there? I mean, you, you had more training as a medic. Yes. Okay. Did you work in the hospital there? Likely. Yes. Uh, it got real interesting uh, after the war started. Oh, yeah. So was, the casualties the would come over. The Army couldn't take care of all their casualties. Right. Fort Sam Houston has a big hospital next to the Burke Army Medical Center. Right. But the war was bloody quick. Mm -hmm. It happened. A lot of casualties. We got much of the overflow from 
Burke Army Medical Center to Lackland Air Force Base. We had a fairly big hospital, 1,500 bed hospital, and uh, we took care of the ones that the Army couldn't handle. Okay. And uh, I got along well in the medics. Uh, Tending wounded is one thing, taking, taking care of sick call, that's okay. But finally they put me in OB and GYN. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't like that. Uh, I, time, time to go. Okay, so you went to Electron. What, what did you go to? Yes. Okay. Where did you do your training for that? Larry Air Force Base in Denver. In Denver, Colorado. And how long was that training? I think you said 30, 32 weeks, 32 and then we weeks. had 12 weeks of uh, candy school. Okay. Once you learn the basics, and then... Okay. And, and uh, was that also at Lowry? Also at Lowry. Okay. And I went to Fairchild, Washington, mm -hmm. as a mechanic, came back to Lowry, Guttery School, back to Fairchild. Okay. Well, why did you want to get out, why did you want to get into Guttery School? Or is it something you wanted, or did yeah. they just tell you? They just tell you to do it, or did you want to? I wanted to do that. I okay. wanted to fly, and I, I was too young to get into the officer program at that time. Mm -hmm. okay. You didn't need much education then. Uh, you had yeah, a high school education. <laughs> okay. And uh, 14 weeks of terrible, terribly intensive training at Randolph. I didn't need that. Now Randolph's in Virginia. No, so. Randolph Air Force Base in New Braunfels, Texas. Not too far from San Antonio. Okay, Randolph, right. Okay. Did, were you at Randolph? No, no only sightseeing. Okay. I had a year okay. in San Antonio to look around. I hear you. But we didn't have much time off once the war started. Uh, did you go overseas any? We went over the sea, but we never went overseas. <laughs> you went over the sea, but you never went over. How far over the sea did you get? Did you fly out a ways and turn around? Average flight be uh, 16, 18 hours. Okay. But the bomber wasn't as fast as today's air transport planes. 400, 450 miles an hour. Was that a B-36? B-36. It was long-range aircraft. Those things had uh, were propeller prop driven, weren't they? They had six, six engines. Pusher props on the Three on the back of each wing, plus four jet engines. Yeah. J-57 Pratt & Whitney jets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that what you flew in then? What? Yeah. What, where were you? Where did you sit? Lower aft, right? Where, where would that be? Up near the, in a compact? No, no, aft. In the, in the rear? Right. Aft, okay. Forward, aft. Okay, forward, aft, right. What would you do while you were sitting there? What was your job? Your main job is to <coughs> watch the engines. Okay. Uh, the plane carried two engineers, three pilots, uh, two navigators, and bombardier, and electronic kind of countermeasures officer. They also had secondary. Some of them had secondary jobs. Mm -hmm. The engineers could see what the engines were doing from gauges, but they couldn't actually see them. Okay. So we watched the engines constantly. Did you ever have any mishaps or anything with the engines? Did they go out, flare out on you? Or? Not bad on the 36s. No, they were they were good. Pretty reliable. Uh, sometimes uh, they were very good engines, actually. Okay. Uh, blue smoke meant you were using oil. Uh, something the oil line was loose or the plane was hurting there. But with 10 engines, though, you can Pretty turn one off right. keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, you, you were on the right, and then, then there was somebody else on the left watching somebody the left? Somebody else on the left, somebody above me, and there were four men in the rear section. How big a crew on a B-36? Standard crew was 16. That's a lot. When you had weather people on, uh, recon people, photographers, crew could be 21. Oh, boy. Um, when you went out like that, uh, were you flying off the west coast or east coast then? Out of Fairchild, and it's 300 miles inland from Seattle. Yeah. Okay. How far out would you go then? You'd go about 16 hours, you say? Yes. Go to Alaska? Uh-huh. Oh, you'd go to Alaska and come back. You would circle around the top of the earth and come back. Did you see any uh, Soviet planes while you were Only at a distance. No distance. 
Did you shoot them down? <laughs> <laughs> I never really saw one nose pointing toward us. Right. It's but at a distance. Sort of respect. respect. Okay. Um, did you, what, how many missions or sorties or things like that did you, did you fly in the B-36? 36, I had less than 30 probably. Okay. Were you in any other planes? B-29s for a while. A B-29? Okay. And that was a, they caught on fire a lot. They did? Yeah. <laughs> but they were, uh, you had the B-29 and that was the plane that, uh, Flew a lot in the Pacific, is that right, during yeah. World War II? Yes, the last part, uh -huh. yeah. Second World War. The B-29. Super Fortress, Super Fortress right. and then the B-50 was a souped up 29. Okay. Had a bigger rudder, superchargers on the engines, uh, okay. reversible props, a lot of goodies that the old 29 didn't have. Were you in the 29 before you, were you in the 50s also? The no, no. Were you in the 29s before you were in the B-36s? We trained with. 29. Okay. At Larry, they trained us. Now, this is military. Yes. They trained us B-36 gunnery uh -huh. program on a B-29, which had different weapons. I'm not going to try to explain system. that. And they are <laughs> well, that's <laughs> military. Right. It's a military way. And uh, what kind of guns did you have? Did you say 20 millimeter or 50? 20 millimeter on the B-36. Uh -huh. 50 calibers on the B-29s. Okay. B-29 weapons a little faster. Could fire 720 rounds in a minute from each weapon. They uh -huh. were duels also. Uh -huh. Twin cannon, twin machine guns, and a 20 millimeter cannon only was 600 rounds okay. a minute. So each one, each weapon carried a minute's worth of firepower. A minute's worth. Um, okay, then um, did you fly in the 29s on missions or was no? No, that's Okay. Training at Larry. Just training. And then you you hooked up with the 36s in Seattle. Okay. okay. Which we already knew we, that we worked on. Um, the, uh, were you in any other type of aircraft after the 36s? No. That's your, what you retired out of? Or retired, right? <laughs> I mean, we're discharged. Not quite 21. Kicked out of the plane time. or something like that. Um, now, um, what kind? What? Why would you go on a mission in a B-36? What was the purpose of that? Everything was secret. Every mission was secret. We, nobody knew. Sometimes the officer didn't know until they opened the packet in flight. Uh -huh. But only time after a while, in the very last days of the Korean War, we got to the Arctic Circle, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a tremendous amount of planes. And the idea at that time was, in case of the Russian attack, one third of our aircraft being in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and you were armed then, weren't you? Yes. Okay. Not only with machine guns, but cannon. Bombs? The bombs. Did you have nuclear bombs? We don't know what they were. Okay. Uh, they, they came out to the aircraft, but heavily armed. Mm -hmm. but the men with the machine guns front and back of them, actually with them. they very serious about it. They did the loading. Okay. And you don't know what they loaded on there? No. no. Okay. We weren't invited to help. <laughs> that, that particular plane, that, uh, is there a way out? You got shot down. Oh, did there's a lot of ways out. Parachutes? Oh, yeah, everybody carries parachutes. Okay. And the bomb base is the best way to do that, of course. You can jump out the bomb base. Yeah, if you put a hundred pound weight on, the doors open automatically. Oh, okay. Most of the bombers... Would go so you through. could step on it and... Right, if, if you were walking by and fell in, you'd gone. You'd have a problem. But there wasn't really a problem because there were chutes built between the aft and the fourth compartments. Tunnels uh -huh. built in the aircraft. Uh -huh. And uh, on the 36, you had a little wagon dolly, like a mechanic uses, with a rope overhead, you could pull yourself through from the front to the back. Oh, I see. Did you have to lay down, or...? Yes, you lay down and crawl in. Okay, put yourself through. Um, well, uh, did, is there anything memorable about any of those flights that you could say or anything? Like, did you have to land the plane one time or something? Like no, that? no, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. The most memorable thing was in training at Lowry with the B-29. Uh -huh. We seldom came back with four engines. 
they caught on fire. And they had a unique fuel system. Somebody figured out that the fuel burns better when it's preheated. So they ran the intake, gasoline intake to the carburetor mm -hmm. over the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And then heat the gasoline over okay. Yeah. But if you ever had a leak, you had a fire. Okay. There were plenty of leaks then? And you haven't been. They were. Okay. had leaks. Now, uh, <clears throat> were you married while you were in the service? No, no. Okay. I wouldn't have time to marry you. That took me time to zoom too. What, what, what does a young airman do who's single and goes on, on leave or liberty? I do a lot of sightseeing. Do you? Case. Really? Right. In Colorado, for instance, there's a lot of things to see the mountains to climb. Okay. And uh, the old towns, the old mining towns to explore. And uh, movies. Uh huh. The Alamo. Oh, it's San Antonio. The Alamo is a big hit. A big there. hit down there. <laughs> big federal building across the street. From the Alamo? There was when I was there. Was half a century ago. Um. <clears throat> Do you, do you have anything else you'd like to say? you have any tattoos you want to talk about or anything? I was never near a tattoo partner when I was drinking. <laughs> and never drinking when you were. Okay. So you know. <laughs> okay. Um, do, do you ever, have you ever kept in touch with any of the people you were in the military with? Or everybody's gone? Most of them. Yeah. Were you in uh, the reserves after you got out or anything? No, no. In those days you had three years after duty, there was no reserve requirement. Okay. Were you, uh, did you get involved after you got out in any veterans organizations or anything? Joined the American Legion. I was active a while with uh, Civil Air Patrol. Okay. Uh, while you were in the service, did you ever uh, meet anyone famous? Did you ever see any famous generals? No, but I was on the same base with, at uh, Clark Gable's house. Is that right? The same base? I never saw him. No, he was there six years earlier. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> That's your claim to fame. Or George A. Washington, uh, Spokane, Washington. Uh huh. Clark was a captain. Yeah, he was. Uh -huh. and, During the war. And he did. He couldn't be a pilot. He was too old and slow. So he's actually served as a gunner for B-17. And he was a captain, too. Right. <laughs> Weird. Did you ever see anybody famous like movie stars? Or oh, Bob Hope. Oh, yeah. Did you see Bob Hope? Did he come through and, on the USO thing? San Antonio, 1950. Okay. Great show. Was he's it? still showing. Is it? Yeah. What do you mean he's still showing? He's still alive. He's still alive at the show. <laughs> at the show. Ago. 100 years old. Um, anybody else? Uh, that you? I remember Marilyn Maxwell. Marilyn Maxwell. She was with Bob Hope. Okay. Okay. Much more attractive. Better looking than Bob Hope. Oh yeah. Um, how about uh, Curtis LeMay? Our father was George Omaha. LeMay be thy name. <laughs> yes, we knew Curtis LeMay. Did you ever see him? No. no. Strange man, wasn't he? That's what they tell us. He was the head of the Strategic Air Command. He was, uh, was he not George Wallace's running mate? He was, wasn't he? He was the vice presidential candidate leader. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, not really. Uh, you, you've had uh, all your children, have, you have six children. Have all of them been in the service? Only four of them. Four of them. The four boys? No, three boys and uh, our older daughter. Okay. Deborah. Okay. The youngest child was crippled. Okay. Youngest. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Now is she still in the service? No. Okay. She served seventeen years. Quit. Is is any are any of your children still in the service or they're they are retired too? Or they're out? The oldest child retired. Uh huh. From the navy. Uh huh. Uh, he retired from uh, the last station of Selfridge Air Force Base, Michigan. Uh -huh. He was the Navy Air. And uh, we have one child still in. Who, who's that? Austin. Okay. Uh, he's been in 21 years. 
Navy? Navy. Mm -hmm. Did any of them go in the Air Force? No. Mm -hmm. I heard you talk about it too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> they loved the Navy, yeah, okay. because uh, their favorite uncle of theirs. One, okay. one is uncle, actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, now, uh, some of your grandchildren either are or were in the service, too, right? We've had two granddaughters. Yeah. Two granddaughters? Right. Three. Okay. Three. three. Jessica's in. Oh, yeah, we got three and uh, maybe and four. Step one. Oh, one step grandchild. Okay, we have, we've had three in. Okay. One's still in, one's in Pearl Harbor now. Pearl Harbor. Is that the Navy? Yes, she's at Pearl. She's at the she's yeah. Navy Tech, the dental tech. She's been in three years. Her father retires from the Navy, oh. two weeks, Supermaster Chief, uh -huh. uh, 30 years service. Oh, good and, um, and now we've got a girl, a granddaughter, I was talking about one, that's in uh, Fort Stewart. And she's, is that she's right? She's a daughter of the oldest son who's retired from the Navy. He's in the, she's in the Army. Army. Okay. And, okay. And well, we had one, he had another daughter who joined the Air Force. Okay. She got hurt in basic training, lacking in Texas. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I want to come over here and sit. We talked. Uh, I've got your voice on the air, but uh, yeah, yeah, come over here and sit. Let her sit. She can, she can sit by, by you, can't she? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, you got a loud. Yeah, well, he won't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we got the got got you both there now. Okay. Anything you want to say, either of you? <clears throat> If not, I think I think that that young men and women should get in the military. I really? Yeah. Yes. Gives them because a lot. Mm -hmm. It they grow up a lot. They learn how to take care of themselves. Uh, when they're at home, mamas do too much for them, and then <laughs> they get married, and then the wife has to do for them. Yes. When they're in the military, they can take care of themselves, and they know how when they get out. My they, son went in the army. It helped him a lot. They, I think the military helps people a lot, and uh, whether we have a daughter-in-law that was a lieutenant in the Army, or no, the Navy, and uh, she, uh, she married our youngest son, mm -hmm. and um, the, the military bases are great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about your children and, you know, things like that. Okay. Like the kids can go outside and nobody's going to grab them mm -hmm. and things like that. It's, it's, I think it's nice. Okay, well, I appreciate, appreciate, um, and I always shake hands with the veteran here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for everything. All right, you thank you, Judge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That story here, when I turned off the camera, it always happens that somebody starts to talk about something. So you were in the plane and, and you threw Coke bottles out of the plane? No, no, some. Full lift to the six pack of Coke bottles sitting on the Bombay doors. Oh, okay. And it was a practice flight out of the ocean. We'd run out over over the Pacific and then come back in and do practice bombings on various cities Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles, San Diego. Mm -hmm. We'd go out far enough and everything was secret. Nobody knew we were there. And part of the purpose was to test the ADIZ or Air Defense Interception Zone. Mm -hmm. How long would it be before the? It was a test against our air defense command. Okay. Are they going to spot us coming in? Uh, sometimes we'd make our third bomb run over a big city before fighters would come up. I see. Really? So you would get through? Yes, you'd, you'd and sometimes get... they'd meet us out over the ocean. Okay. So, uh, it That's wasn't scary, though. <laughs> it was kind of scary. Sometimes you'd get through. <laughs> uh, Golden Gate Bridge was a favorite bomb spot. Okay. You obliterated that many times. Oh, yes, places. and uh, they also did uh, the prison. Mm-hmm. Okay. The they island? Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Alcatraz, yeah. yeah they, they did this with radar bomb scoring. Mm -hmm. The bombardier would announce what time he dropped the bombs exact instant. Because they were tracking you on the ground by radar. Mm -hmm. They knew his position. And uh, if he was right, he hit the target. Mm -hmm. And they okay. graded the bombardiers on that. So uh, one time you opened up the bomb bay doors and out went they the They would actually open the bomb bay doors. And out went the Coke bottles. Right. It was, the, and and it, it was written in paper. It was written up in the what paper? 
It was a Seattle paper. Okay. And uh, someone had complained about Coke bottles being dropped out. It was a big mystery in Seattle. Somebody figured it out. <laughs> Could have been one of our bombers. So if the Coke bottles came out and they landed in Seattle. Downtown on City Street. <laughs> Direct hit. <laughs> you got through that time. <laughs> yes, it was close. Uh, but uh, at least we hit the city. Yeah, good, good. Well, but the bombardiers used to say, well, if we're dropping a nuclear bombs, it doesn't matter. Close counts. Yeah, with nuclear, close counts. I remember okay. when I was a kid and we lived in Chillicothe, and we were visiting our grandmother in Londonderry on Route 50. Mm -hmm. And I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I never saw so many army trucks in all my life. They were completely loaded with soldiers, and it went almost all day long. A big, solid yeah. string of military vehicles. When was that? And it was either 1944, 43, or 44. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure which. In the Second War, then. But yeah. anyway, it scared us. We were really... And then all my... Ants were running up and down the the front of the yard, yelling, throw me a cigarette because everything was rationed. They couldn't get any cigarettes, and they knew the soldiers had them. And these soldiers were throwing cigarettes out. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the little uh, coupon books, mm -hmm. the little stamps. If you were out of sugar and you didn't have one of these stamps, you couldn't buy any sugar no matter how much money you had because you'd already used that stamp. Mm -hmm. And you had to pay for it, but if you didn't have the stamp, you didn't get it. And then we always had blackouts, scared. It was really scary mm -hmm. because planes would roll, they would go over. No one in the whole town in Chillicothe could have their lights on. Mm -hmm. And if you had a light on, they'd beat on the window to tell you, turn the lights out. And we'd go out and there'd be planes going everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know whose they were, whether they, we were hoping and praying they were ours. <laughs> so we didn't know yeah. if they were ours or not. But anyway, it was really different growing up then. I'll bet. It sounds different than today, I'll tell you. <laughs>